So, yes, you hear me. Uh, I think it's time to start. Uh, before I start, I have an announcement to make. The closing session is starting at 4.30. So, you know, not 17, 4.30. So, you know. Um, well. Hey, allihopa, vad roligt att vara här. And now I think I've woken up the English speaker in the audience. <laughs> I promise you, I, I talked to some guy yesterday, you know, your English is better than my Swedish, he said. So I am going to do this in English, I promise you. I'm going to talk about how to find unknown family with my heritage DNA. But I want to start with a couple of questions. And you can raise your hand if you agree. I was before the bell. Well, they can join us later. How many of you have an unknown ancestor in your family tree? Well, I think it's at <laughs> most everyone. Uh, how many of you have taken a DNA test? And that's everyone. And this is a bit more sensitive question, so you don't have to answer. You can answer in your head if you want to. But how many of you have discovered a surprise in your family through a DNA test? Not that many. Because we have to be aware of that. When we take a DNA test, we can discover things that we didn't know about. We can discover siblings, um, children that we didn't know about, or that our father isn't our father. And especially if we ask someone else to test, we have to inform them, them of that possibility beforehand. Trust me, I know by experience. We're going to talk to you about, about that a bit later. You want to do that beforehand. Um, but back to the, this question, how to find unknown family with my heritage DNA. Well, for some people, oh, sorry, wrong, take a DNA test and there's the surprise. You have it right in your uh, overview when you open your DNA test. You have the, the surprise, you have the unknown family there. You have a family member you didn't know about. It's not that common, but it happens. For most of us, it takes a bit more of work than just taking the test, especially for me. But we come back to that later. Who am I? Uh, I'm from Sweden, as I said. I'm working as a professional genetic genealogist. And uh, I do this kind of presentations. I have online educations and I help people find their birth fathers, mostly. My daughter, she says that we have a complicated family tree. She has a point. We will look into that in a while. And I also have a lot of unknown fathers in my family tree. And we can take that question um, right now because people often ask me, ask me, you work with this. Of course you have sold all your unknown fathers. No. <laughs> Not one, because it's not just knowing how to find them. It's about the right people testing when you don't know who the supposed to be father is. You have to have some luck too. Um, and when it comes to genetic genealogy, obviously my rel relatives aren't that interested. So that's why, why I am out doing talks all over, because I want more people to test. So maybe someday, hopefully, patience isn't my good side. Uh, good, uh, I'm not good at patience either. This is um, part of my family tree. We're not going to, to look at it all, but we're going to take a look at part of it, because this is a good place to look. You see me, Christina, and you see my full brother, Thomas. Thomas and I have shared the same mother and father, but we're just going to look at my father's side. 
My father, Leonard, he is deceased for more like, for, I think it's 20 years ago. And his parents is Gunnar and Sylvia. This is what I call my legal family. My legal family. When my grandparents died, my father inherited them. And when my father died, well, actually, my mother inherited him, but I will later, you know, how it works. Um, so this is my legal family. But I also have a sister, Linda. Uh, and Linda has been in our family since she was three years old, when her, car, her parents were in car accident. Uh, so they couldn't care for her. They lived, but they, they survived, but they couldn't care for her. So she's been in foster care uh, in our family since she was three. And she's over 40 now, so, but she's still my sister. She is my sister, but she's not related to me legally because she never was adopted and she not, uh, she's not uh, related to me by blood. So she's part of what I call my social family. And back to this complicated family tree, my grandparents are my adopted grandparents because my father was adopted at birth. So Axel and Ingrid are my biological grandparents. They are part of my biological family. And when my father was sick and he had about six months to live, I think, he just said one day said, um, by the way, you have a big brother. Not everyone gets a big brother when they're 25. Uh, and I must have looked very, very surprised. I have a big brother. His name is Tord. And when, after my father passed away, my mother said, you know, when a person dies, you get this record from the registration office stating the family, the heirs, and there can be surprises in the, on that record. And I said, okay, I know, he told me about Tord. And she said, okay, he did. Did he tell you about Ilva? <laughs> As I said, I must have looked quite shocked when we talked and when we had that conversation. No, he didn't. So I obviously have a big sister too. Uh, what can I expect to find through DNA with this? from this family picture. Well, of course, I can't find Gunnar and Sylvia because they were dead before DNA testing existed, but I don't share any blood with them. So I won't find them or their relatives uh, through a DNA test. I won't be able to find Linda because we're not related by blood. She's just part of my social family. Um, my big brother, Tord, he contacted us, I think it's about 15 years ago now. And when he heard that I wanted to take a DNA test on Thomas, my younger brother, he said, do you have any use of my DNA? And I had learned by then that we want all DNA we can get, right? Uh, so, and half sibling, because every match you you share with a half sibling, you know which part of the tree to look at, right? It's perfect. So he took a DNA test. Um, and Ulva, well, I know her surname. I know approximately where she was born. So someday, I hope I find, find her. But back to Tord and the DNA test. He said, and this is a true story. I, don't, I, have, I have actually, people tend to, to make stories better, but this is actually true. He said, I want to know if I'm related to Tore Skogman. Do you know who Tore Skogman is? Yeah, he's a Swedish mu musician. I want to know if I'm related to Tore Skogman, the Swedish king, and Genghis Khan. <laughs> okay, quite tough uh, challenge. So the result, results came back and I called him and I said, okay, I can't tell you if you're related to Tore Skogman. I can't tell you if I'm related to the Swedish king. 
and I can't tell you if you're related to Genghis Khan. What I can tell you is that you're not related to me. So my father had taken on a paternity that wasn't his. So Todd is now part of my social family. And this is what DNA can do. I thought I would have great clues and we weren't uh, siblings at all. And you have to prepare for that. That can happen. I don't know how many people I meet that says, oh, but we are so alike each other. It's safe. I don't have to test to know. I can just go on and order a big Y test for like 6,000 Swedish crowns, like $600, $650 or what it is. I know we're siblings. Don't do that. <laughs> Start with an autosomal test. Uh, make sure that the, the relationship as, is as what you think it is. Please, you save money. I promise you. And what about Ilva? Well, someday I hope she tests because that's the only way for me to find her. Uh, because when it comes to siblings, uh, when it comes to children, we can't take, we can't find that kind of unknown family by other matches because our common ancestor is my father. So she has the test for me to find her. I hope she does because I really want to meet her. But for now, I just have to wait. And that, there's that patience thing again. I'm, I'm not good at patience. So what can I expect to find with DNA? Well, of course, I will find descendants and relatives to Axel and Ingrid, my biological grandparents, and I have. Uh, and we've seen this picture a lot this weekend. That's the worst part of being uh, the last on the show because everyone has seen a lot already. But maybe some of the pieces in the puzzle will fall in place because I will tell you it a bit different. I love this overview that my heritage have because it's so easy to, to, to see. It's me in the middle and for each uh, circle you get further away. So in the close family, I have my mother and then I have an extended family of seven people right now. This extended family is, uh, I have managed to solve how I am related to, to four of them. And they're in, like in the second cousin, uh, a second cousin once removed. I have one that I haven't, uh, the closest, of course, that I haven't been able to, to uh, identify how we're related because she hasn't done her genealogy. <laughs> and she's from a country where in Sweden, I can just call the registration office and say, I have want to know when this person was born and, and who her parent was. I can't do that in this country. So, but hopefully someday we will sort that out. And then I have two matches where, well, we come from parts in Sweden when, where everyone is quite related to each other. So we're probably like seventh cousin five times or something. And I haven't had the time to research their trees fully. So, uh, and then I have like 4,200 distant relatives and I might find out how I'm related to one or two of them, but most of those I will never be able to find out how I am related to. DNA, as you have seen in this weekend, is bio biology. So we are going to take a quick biology class. You know what this is, right? Yeah. And in the nucleus, you have the uh, 23 chromosome pairs. I heard this lovely analogy this morning about shoes. You know, we have a pair of shoes with two shoes in each pair, one from your parents, one from father and one from mother. And that's important. That's the main thing when we're looking for unknown family. We have to know, are we related to a person on the father's side or on the mother's side? Um, we have a 
what we call a genealogy tree. This is what I can find when I do genealogy on my father's side of the family. This is his genealogy tree. You see holes. I said I have a lot of unknown fathers. Um, but this is what I found. And he has inherited 50% from his mother and 50% from his father. This is repetition. And if you go back, he has on average 25% from each grandparent. But on average, that means that he can have gotten more from his paternal grandfather and less from his paternal grandmother. So he might have gotten 28% from his paternal grandfather and 22 from his paternal grandmother. We don't know. That's on my wish list, a tree to set what I, have in, uh, what I have inherited from each ancestor. But we uh, don't have that yet, maybe soon. And for each generation, it cuts in halves. So and five generations back, it's about three percentage from each ancestor in that generation on average. And that means that for my father's grandfather's grandfather's father, he might have gotten 6% by chance. And from this ancestor, oh, sorry, he got none. Because that's ju just how it works. You have to have them both because otherwise my father or I, we wouldn't be here. You have to have all of your ancestors. Uh, but what this creates is what we call a genetic family tree. And this is a picture to, to try to show you the principles, not the reality, the principles. So here the holes are ancestors with who you don't share any DNA. You're still related to them because otherwise you wouldn't be here. But you don't have any DNA left from them. Um, so this is just a picture to show you, so as I said, the principles. In the real life, you have DNA from all of your ancestors six generations back in time. But then you lose. Then you lose DNA. Uh, so you are both your genealogy tree and your genetic tree. Uh, and when we compare and when we try to find uh, unknown family, we have to have that in the back of our heads, that we don't have DNA from every ancestor. And the same goes for our relatives. And when we compare our uh, DNA, we have to share DNA in the exact same spot to to be on each other's match list. So how do we find unknown family? Well, we don't know what to look for. So to find one strategy to find unknown, we have to sort out what we know. And some tools to use for this is uh, this is me, or from my mother's view. And this button, review DNA match, is where to start. Here we have the overview. And I will switch from my mother and me to myself and John. John is a relative of mine. The estimated relationship, as you see, is first cousins once removed, or second cousins and you share um, see you see we share 3.4 percent of dna so is this true i don't know yet let's look the first tool you see on this page is the tree and we love people doing their genealogy and having their trees in the system right so this is john's tree Yay! <laughs> Actually, it is a J because we don't do surnames in Sweden. 
we don't do surnames in yes yeah, i don't think you do surnames in in norway either because they change surnames in every generation our ancestor did but you see andreas Sjernström and ep anderson Sjernström. wait a minute i recognize that one if i look at my father's tree Erik Petter Sjernström. It's a match. So John is my father's second cousin. So even with a small tree, sometimes I'm, I get lucky because I recognized it. So I, I'm quite envy of you who, who do surnames. I wish we did too, but it's hard to change the history. So now I know that my father and John are second cousins. So the, me and John are second cousins once removed. So it's quite close. And this is in a part of Sweden where everyone is very much related. So that I have more, a bit more DNA with John isn't strange in my eyes. So now I know how, how I am related to John. Then I go down to the tool, the shared matches. I have 800. 825 shared DNA matches with John. That's good. Uh, and this is the best tool. I love this um, because not only do I see um, how they think I am related to John, first cousins once removed, to yeah, I, I compare it with Anna now. Anna is uh, a common. Um, common match between me and John. And I is supposed to be first cousin twice removed to second cousin once removed with Anna. But I also see the relationship between Anna and John. And here I see that they are siblings. So now I have two persons on my match list that I know how, how I am related to. Easy. It would have taken me a lot more time if that relationship between Anna and John hadn't been there. So let's go down to the next on the list, Kalle. Kalle is estimated to be a second cousin or second cousins once removed. And first cousins once removed to second cousin with John. What we have to think about when we look at this is just because they are shared matches, we don't have to be related with them on through the same ancestor, especially not in Sweden when everyone is related to each other. But I have a big clue on this page, and that's this, this triangulation symbol, because this tells me that I, John and Kalle share segments on the same chromosome in the pair. These boxes on chromosome four, five, and six tells me that we are related on the same chromosome in my DNA. And I know how I am related to John, right? He's on my father's side. So Kalle, he also has to be on my father's side of the tree. And they have to be on the same line on my family tree. Um, John was to my paternal grandmother's mother's side, and Kalle is actually his grandfather. His grandfather is uh, my grandmother's brother. So it fits. So I know now I'm related to Kalle and it's my grandmother's branch. So I can sort out this. If I'm looking for unknown, um, unknown parents, let's say, or my grandfather's side, I know that I won't, don't have to look at John and Kalle. I sort out the people that I know how I am related to. And the one that's left, the one in that extended family, 
those are the people I will focus on. Uh, I thought I would give you some advice on how to find a birth father. It's more common than you see. We heard that earlier today. That's about 2% that has another father than they think. The best thing you can do is to test your mother. If she's alive, of course. Um, because then you can do this um, sorting of people on your mother's and your father's side of the tree very easily through that triangulation tool. If she's not alive, you have to test other relatives, as many as you can, on your mother's side to try to sort this out because you want to exclude matches on your mother's side. And while you do, pray that they're not related. But we have to start somewhere. So we start by assuming that they're not related. And then we get a headache later. And as I said, work with the ones that uh, that's left. And the same principle uh, applies when you're looking for a grandparent or great grandparent. You have to sort the matches. Uh, you have to, to try to find out which branch in your tree are the known matches on. A question I got um, asked a lot, and I think this has to do with the Y DNA. If we're searching for a paternal grandfather, we think, but I'm a female, I can't test to find my paternal grandfather. You can. Because when we're talking about autosomal DNA, it doesn't matter if you're male or female. It doesn't matter because you have half of your DNA from your father and half from your mother. So test yourself. You don't have to test your brother. It's better to test him too, but if he doesn't want to test, it's fine with you. So either if you're searching for your paternal grandfather or your um, maternal grandmother's mother, uh, the MyHeritage DNA test covers that. Um, you can't, as we heard, uh, you pr probably heard Diane said earlier, we can't go how far back. Uh, we can't go so far back, five, six generations maybe. And for each generation we go back and want to find a common ancestor, it gets harder. It gets a lot harder. Um, because we have to do what I call strategic testing. And when you can't DNA test the one you want, test them you can, test the ones you can. If I can't find, if I can't DNA test my unknown father, I test my mother. When I can't test my unknown grandfather, I test my cousins and second cousins and third cousins my half siblings, everyone to help me sort uh, information, to help me gather information so I know which side of the tree to look at. And that's what all for now. Thank you.